Here, our next guest says that while early reports are mixed for broader markets, they are promising for the quote rotation trade. Joining us now is Lori Calvacina, RBC Capital head of U.S. Equity Strategy. Welcome, Lori. So. What is this rotation trade that you're talking about? So looking just the movement out of, say, the MAG7, mega cap growth. We also run a lot of screens on the top 10 names, my market cap in the S&P, just kind of moving from that bigger, safer, growthier stuff into just generally the rest of the S&P, uh, the Russell 2000, you know, kind of anything else, frankly. What is the latest evidence that you have that bodes well for that? So one stat that we watch really closely is the rate of upward revisions between the top 10 names and the rest of the S&P. We've basically been seeing for the past year more upward revisions in those top 10 names. What we're starting to see, though, is that gap is closing. So the rest of the market is starting to gain on that top 10 cohort. If I get a little bit more discreet and a little bit more finite, when we look at growth rate expectations for 2024 and 2025, I'm starting to see a number of sectors besides those big mega cap growth areas like comm services and tech move up. So for 2024, we've actually seen the financials growth rate embedded in consensus numbers move up pretty sharply. If I look ahead to 2025, it's areas like industrials, materials, and healthcare. We'll see if industrial stays there. You know, after this week, we're starting to get a lot of reports, but healthcare is an area we've been starting to really see good upward revision trends in as well. How impressed were you by the financial part of earnings season? And do you think industrials can repeat? So, you know, I'll tell you on industrials, I'm neutral. I'm overweight financials. Um, I just can't get past the sticker shock on the valuations for industrials. The median P.E. on the S&P 500 industrial sector on both an absolute basis, so versus its own history and relative to the broader market, is more than two standard deviations above mm. the long-term average dating all the way back to the late 1980s. That, maybe that explains GE Aerospace's 8% yeah. drop or Lockheed's 5% drop and, today. And yeah. to give you some context, that's exactly where the tech sector was a year ago. We actually downgraded that back in January. And it's just to tell you, there's, you know, it's not just a couple of names in industrials that are generating the froth. It's very widespread. And I can't find a single group other than airlines, you know, that has good earnings revisions and attractive valuations in the industry. So it's not, sector. you don't think it's necessarily uh, a, a tale about the sector, the business, more yeah. about positioning? I, I think, you know, I don't know if it's positioning per se, but it definitely feels over its skis from a valuation perspective. Um, and I think on the, you know, kind of going back to the financials, you know, we've had very good healthy earnings revision trends there. I think banks, if you go back to SVB, they kind of hit typical recession type lows on the rate of upward revisions. We're midway through an earnings revision recovery there. And the valuations on financials, they're not fantastic, but they still look cheap on a relative multiple. They're a little bit above average on an absolute multiple, but frankly, everything in the S&P is, is starting to look that way. Are you a fan of this notion today on the tape that we're sort of front-running a post-election bounce? You know, I, I definitely see hints that Trump trades are getting put on. Um, if you look at small caps, which is, you know, my old coverage area from way back in the day, the CFTC data on Russell 2000 future positioning is almost back to 2016, 2017, 2018 highs. Those peaks that we saw in 2016, the first one was generated on optimism around sort of Trump winning economic excitement. The second was the 2017 uh, tax cuts. And then the third one was actually the China trade war when everybody was dumping money into the U.S. early in the year. So we have seen small caps get sucked into sort of the political vortex in the past. Um, you know, just conversations with hedge funds back in September once we got past that Fed meeting. Everyone kind of I was talking to at least agreed the election was the next big thing. And I don't think they were doing a ton of, you know, sort of trading then, but I'm seeing it in the data. But the, the rate picture is much different than it was in 16 or 17, yeah? I think that's fair. Right. I think that's absolutely fair. And, you know, I think if I go back to the small caps, hedge funds have been, you know, kind of jerking them around. I apologize for the language, but they, <laughs> they've been moving them up whenever they get, you know, sort of excited about Fed dovishness. And when they take the dovishness too far, they hit small caps, and, you know, and, and pull them back down. And I noticed on Monday, I mean, small caps had a pretty big downward mood. And I'm not sure if it was some of the swing state polling that came out or the fact that we're all suddenly talking about a November skip. Maybe it's some combination of the two, but I, I see hints of it in energy performance as well, banks. Um, and we also think the S&P is starting to become realigned with Trump in the betting markets.